When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. You might have heard of the taste regions of a tongue. So this is our tongue here. And on the back of our tongue, we can detect bitter taste. On the sides, we can detect sour and salt. In the front, we can detect sweet. And these are our different types of tastes. And the interesting part is, for example, pear and apple have very similar substances in terms of you know, sugar and salt in it, which would give it a very similar taste. It has a similar taste because it has a similar amounts of these different types of chemicals, such as salt and sugar. But still, the flavor is actually quite different. So they, if you eat a pear and apple, you can taste, uh, you can detect that they have a different flavor, right? They don't taste exactly the same. So your flavor is different. Flavor is different. So why would their flavor be different if theoretically the taste bud should be detecting the same type of tastes? Why would the flavor be different? And that's what we're actually going to discuss in this video. I'll read the doc point. It says process information from secondary sources to identify and describe the use of esters as flavors and perfumes in processed food and in cosmetics. So in this case, what we have to talk about is we should be talking about what flavor actually is and how esters help us improve our flavor or change our flavor and why we use, perfume, per, why we use esters in perfumes as well when it comes to cosmetics. So the first one, I'll talk a bit about taste and flavor again. And the thing that makes flavor different for a pear compared to an apple is there are different esters. We've got different esters in pears compared to apples. And th these different esters actually result in that different types of flavors. And the same when it comes to perfume. The reason why we can smell perfume is because of esters. So you can see this is our nose and how, how smell works is we've got our particles coming in. They will get, they will hit the olfactory bulb. And from there, the signal gets sent to the brain and we get our smell being interpreted. So obviously you can guess why esters might be a decent chemical for this. If you think about the boiling point of esters, what, what was the boiling point of esters compared to alkanoic or alkanoic acids or alkanols? Esters had a lower boiling point. And what does it mean if it has a lower boiling point? What that means is it's often, or it can be found as a vapor. And a vapor means it's gaseous. So if we need to smell something, we want it to be vapor. And esters do that job quite well. Especially the shorter chain esters will be vapor um, in gaseous form when it comes to room temperature. All right, so let me go through a couple of the examples for cosmetics and processed foods. So this is, for example, octothanoate. This is the structure here. And you can see it has a carboxyl acid part. And it has a alkanol part. Those two combine to make an ester. So this is the octal thanoate is an ester. And this ester can actually be found in oranges. It gives the flavor of oranges. And as you can see, it's actually a really small structure. And that's actually important. So this here is a small chemical structure. And it's a small molecule. And what that means is, if you remember, the longer the chain, the higher the boiling point. If it's very small, that means it's going to have a relatively low boiling point. Low boiling point. And why might we want to have that when it comes to flavor? Because if we look at the um, smell again, our flavor is a combination of taste and smell. We actually have to smell the esters and combine that with our taste buds to give us our actual flavor. Which is why when we're sick, we don't really have that same type of flavor than we do if we're not sick. Because if we're sick, our nose is blocked, which means less of the ester will come into our nose and, and cause a smell sensation. And only if we have smell and taste to their fullest degree will we get that full flavor. So what happens if we have a short-chained ester, an ester which is quite small? Well, it has a lower boiling point. And that makes it actually be in vapor form, and therefore it can rise and cause a smell sensation. And again, that smell sensation is useful because if we combine smell and taste, we get flavor. This is one of the actual esters that's used in oranges, that we find in oranges. These are some of the other ones. Again, you don't really need to remember the names. But what you should see with each of them is they have relatively few carbons. They're relatively short. They tend to be meth, eth, prop, bute, or pent. 
not more, because those smaller amounts means that they can actually be gaseous and thereby cause a smell sensation. So these would be other fruits, Easter's, such as in your bananas, banana, apples, and pears. Pretty much each fruit has a relatively unique Easter, which is causing its unique kind of flavor. Right? Because the salt and the sugar levels, they might be quite similar for all the fruit. They might not be that different. Whereas these might be quite different. So again, the, the simple changes, the slight changes in Easter's can give you a quite different flavor. Now, these are natural. So what I mean by natural is these can, can occur in nature. Right? So we have these actually being made in our plants that make the apples, that make the pears, that make the bananas. But if we use them in processed foods, so processed foods is artificial food. Here, what we want to do is we want to have a very cheap alternative. We want to get the same flavor, but we want to get it, make it cheap and we make it on a large scale. So if we always have to, you know, harvest our fruits to get these different types of um, Easter's, that might take quite some time and it might take a bit too much money. So what they do when they make processed foods, they don't use natural ones. They try to mimic, so they try to fake, I'll just call it fake. They try to fake the smell of the natural ones. And they do so by making a synthetic one, which has very similar properties. What I mean by synthetic is it's man-made, right? So we make it in the laboratory, but we make some which are almost identical to the actual natural ones. But because we make it in the lab, we can make more of it, and we can make it for cheaper as well. So in processed foods, they will use your different types of your different types of Easter's for flavors, but they'll make it in a lab because it's cheaper and they can make more of it. For cosmetics, again, especially when it comes to perfume, this would be one example of a reaction where we have our methanol, and this has one, two, three, four, four carbons. This would be butanoic acid. We've got methanol and butanoic acid coming together to form an easter, right here. And this easter, again, is not too big, which means it has a relatively low boiling point. The longer the structure, the higher the boiling point. But because it's a relatively low boiling point, that means it's going to be gaseous in our atmosphere. And if it's gaseous, what that means is it's going to be able to flow into our nose, cause that smell sensation, which is probably what we want when it comes to smelling perfume. So we use, in cosmetics, we use quite a bit of, especially in perfume, part of our cosmetics, we use quite a few Easter's because they give us a good smell sensation. Usually the shorter ones, the short-chained, the short-chained Easter's both have a better smell. They have a better smell. And they are gaseous or almost gaseous at room temperature. Those combinations mean that we can actually use it to, to smell, to, to have these different, and different perfumes would use different types of Easter's, right? So one perfume might use Easter, etc. One other one might use a different one, and using different Easter's gives you those different types of smells. I'll quickly go over the top one again. So for the cosmetic industry, we will use Easter's which have a long, a short chain. The reason why is because they smell better than the longer ones, and they're gaseous, which we need to be able to actually detect smell. And each different type of perfume would have a different combination of Easter's, which gives it its unique smell. For the processed food industry, what they want to do is they want to be able to mimic the natural Easter's found in fruits, because they want to have that same type of taste, same type of flavor. But what they're going to do is they're going to make a fake, or not a fake, but a, a synthetic one, which means they're going to make it in a lab. So you're going to try to find these parts of the actual natural one, which give it the flavor, copy that part, and just make it in the lab. Thereby, they can make process, they can add it into their processed food, which is processed food is just your, sort of your synthetic food, so the food which is, might have quite a few added chemicals. And they add these chemicals just to overall be as close to the real product as possible. And they'll use short-chained Easter's, just like when it comes to cosmetics. Again, because it's gaseous, which means they can actually reach our nose, and smell and taste combination gives us our flavor. And that's what we're focusing on when it comes to food, when they have it, that perfect flavor. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.